All right, welcome back to Cultish, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeremiah Roberts. I am one of the co-hosts here. My trusted co-host and super sleuth, Andrew, is off today at today's recording. Uh, he is uh, taking care of his wife, Casey, and his bred new family. And, well, new new member of the family, I should say. Uh, they just have a new uh, ba- healthy baby boy. So he will be back on the podcast shortly whenever this gets dropped off. So I am running solo again today. I am joined here by J- my man, John Clash. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. Happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So just uh, before we jump in, tell everyone about uh, who you are, what you're all about. You've got a YouTube channel. Yeah. Tell them, Where can people find you at? If you just Google John Clash, J-O-N, Clash, no H, only an H at the end, uh-huh. uh, you'll, you'll be able to find me. Um, just go on YouTube, type John Clash, Twitter, J Clash, Instagram, J Clash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got a pod. So the YouTube channel that you have, it kind of really deals with just really YouTube content uh, around just kind of like apologetics, discernment, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, and l- go ahead. I, I I touch on many different topics. Yeah. Uh, on it, I, when I first started, I I was doing like movie reviews and and stuff. I just really uh, had no direction. So I kind of just now pray and just say, God, what what you want me to do today? And it's not uh-huh. like I hear no audible voice. You know, right, hey, make a right. video about this, uh-huh. but. Uh, you I feel inclined. You feel like to do something. Yeah, right? yeah. I can always tell. Uh, you know, I joke with my wife. I'm like, you know, I can tell when it was the Holy Spirit and when it was me. When it was the Holy Spirit, the video does good. Yeah. When it was me, right, right. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious to hear because um, my Ash, I uh, got hooked up with you. Shout yeah, out to awesome. Ash. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so you've got interesting uh, kind of background and story, something that's like really unique. So when I think of Santeria, a lot of times people think of that uh, Sublime song. Yeah, so and yeah. I actually, I think I made a post about it. I had a couple, I think I did an Instagram story and people literally were replying to me like the lyrics. Like yeah, I don't yeah. practice Santeria. It's I don't got no crystal man. ball. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah. So like a lot of times people will kind of have this idea of like what it is. Um, but yeah, let's just jump into it. So you're, you're 38 now. Yep. And when, how old were you? Like when all of a sudden this started getting like falling into this or yeah. what, what's the starting point for all this? So I was, you have I, a timeline. I was trying to figure out exactly when, cause this was like a blur in my life. You know, yeah. it's a very interesting period of my life. Um, and I was like measuring it by how old my dog is now, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was I was dating someone at the time who was an atheist. Like human years or dog years? Uh, dog years, okay. 12, <laughs> okay. right? I was dating someone at the time who was an atheist who did not want me to go to the next Santeria meeting, Okay. right? And uh, so I was trying to figure out when was that. But uh, I, I can tell you it was like a five to seven year period. Mm-hmm. Um, I was definitely younger. I had more of my hair, but I probably still shaved it. Yeah. Um, And uh, I kind of just got into it by getting invited by a friend. And then it was just full blown craziness. Why don't we do this before we kind of jump into Mm -hmm. like your story linearly? Why don't we just define it? Because like I said, people hear that. And I think just because the people responded with like the lyrics from the sublime song. um, And of course, I mean, given the generation that we're at, we like probably know sublime. We're like college, high school, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, um, like, how would you define it? Because what I think is that it's 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 occultic, mm-hmm. and I think occultic is always syncretistic and always blends into culture. So you have India that has its unique mm-hmm. uh, aspect of the uh, of occultism. You have places like uh, New Orleans or Virginia, where it's a lot more in the backwoods or West Virginia. Um, but this is specifically like based. It's like, this is like. Me- occultism blended in with the culture of Mexico. Is that how you describe so, it? it? I wouldn't say Mexico. I would say it's Spanish culture in, in general, in like general? La- okay. Latino culture in general. Latino, okay. Um, so there's a lot of different offshoots of it, right? So one thing that you'll notice probably in the comment section after this is after we go through my experience, you'll have somebody, people say, oh no, that's not Centuria. That's something else. Oh no, that's not this. That's yeah. something else. And it's because there's so many offshoots of it because right. it, it started in Cuba but you know, then it went to Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. It's in Brazil. It's it's literally everywhere, and everywhere it's practiced a little bit differently. So when we discuss how it went, you know, for me, it's it's not going to be the same as somebody yeah. who may practice it in Puerto Rico or somebody who even even just in different parts of the Dominican Republic they practice mm-hmm. it different in different um, different towns. Right. So, so given that it originated in Cuba, though, is there any aspect of it where of the occult where it's blended into specifically Cuban culture? Or, and what does that look like? So there's like candles and stuff like that? or Yeah, but you'll find that everywhere. Okay. Right? You'll find the candles and you'll find... So let's just backtrack real quick. What it is, is it's an African spirituality that is um, 
uh, has blended with Roman Catholicism, mm. right? So it started off uh, with the Yoruba tribes, which is now like Nigeria, right? And each town kind of had their own deity, right? But when they were all brought over um, in the slave trade, they were all kind of combined, right? right? And uh, brought to one place. Mm -hmm. So they were not allowed to practice their spirituality because you know at, at that time it's like you're catholic or, or right. not like mass di mass baptisms like you're right. in uh so they disguised it as mm. um catholicism so in the african spirituality remember how i was saying that uh, each town will have like a, its own deity yeah so they associated one of those deities with a catholic saint right and so instead of worshiping the deity itself they worshiped that saint but were essentially worshiping the deity that was behind that saint. Now, mm -hmm. when it spread beyond Cuba and spread out to all different parts of Latin America, um, it it took on different forms. Right. So, for example, the the kind that I was in, I was unaware of the African side of this. Mm -hmm. I thought it was all Catholicism and and and, and this like weird offshoot of Roman Catholicism. Cause I, at the time I was an agnostic right. borderline atheist. So I just didn't know any better. So you'll see, uh, if you go in somebody's house or even place of business or, or anything that they may be Latino is you'll see maybe an altar with a candle of maybe baby Jesus or St. Michael or St. John or all of these different saints. You might see a cup with candy in it, a cup of water, uh, the candles, uh, you even might even see some food there as well. And all of this is uh, essentially offerings to these saints, saints, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so that's kind of what it what it looks like if you've never seen it before or just heard okay. it on a sublime song. Yeah, so then when you say when it's like syncretistic and blending in, so when I think of like somebody like taking the mass or like having a, or, you know, you believe like in the Pope have sort of this like intercessory or you think about all the things that happens, like what, what are the rituals look like besides from the candles? Is, is it? Yeah. And I know as, as tapped in, you're trying to access like saints or ancestors yeah. or like, what does it look like ritualistically? So when I, you talk can just, about, I can tell you, you my, form it. Yeah. Does I can that tell you my story? my story of how, yeah. let's uh, jump into your story because happened. Nico Cause yeah, yeah it, I, I had some pretty bugged out experiences in, yeah. they call them bimbas, uh, mm -hmm. bimbes, right? It's uh just like a drum ceremony, right? Right. But there was no drums when I went. They were just playing it on the uh, yeah uh, on the um, radio. But so I got invited by a friend. They said, "Oh, you got to come, come to this. Uh, this lady will tell you tell you your future." And at mm -hmm. the time, I I was just looking for somebody to tell me that I was going to be a famous rapper. That's all okay. that I cared about. So I was like, "All right, cool. I'll go to it." And I trusted him. We ran around the streets together. You know, did mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stupid stuff. So I'm like, "All right." Let's let's check this out. Yeah. So I go there, and it's a, it's basically a party. It's uh you know they're playing music that I never heard before, but it was like the Santeria music. Right. Um, but people are drinking beer, smoking cigars, like it was a, a whole experience. And but I, there was an altar there. There was like this whole setup, right? So I would say if anybody's listening, just picture any like quote unquote altar that you would see in a movie or or something like that. That's Probably you probably have a good idea of what it looks like, or maybe a voodoo altar you've seen in a movie. They look very similar, mm. right? So it's I would say like an hour or two goes by, and it's just us hanging out, drinking beer, smoking cigars, and and talking to people. And then all of a sudden, uh, the atmosphere kind of like shifted mm -hmm. a little bit, and I could tell it was about to like whatever's going down is going down right now, yeah. right? And this lady who I knew, um, she started changing as a not not like physically changing but her mannerisms and the mm. way that she spoke and uh every time that she changed into something else right. they would hand her a different sash it was like a so a almost like a radical personality change like yes. happening in real time like sometimes you see something like two years later and you're like what happened to you instant but this is like yeah. right there instant wow and so she would she would change personalities and sometimes she would talk to people that are in the room sometimes she wouldn't Right. But she would just continue changing personalities. So then she started like going around the room and each personality. Here's here's some things would one of them would like cigars. Right. So smoke, mm -hmm. a, they literally smoke a whole cigar and like a. you ever seen cartoons when, yeah. uh, you know, they smoke a, in yeah. like one smoke, they'll smoke it. Right. Yeah. Or sh she'll like rum this other Thing that she's possessed by will like rum so she'll start drinking a whole bunch of rum or like beer or so yeah it was each personality had a, 
a whole entire different mannerisms and, and things that they liked. And, and it was pretty bugged out, but here I am agnostic, like, all right, this is crazy, whatever. Uh -huh. um, so anyway, she starts going around the room and talking to people. And I'm like, oh, this must be where they're going to tell us our future. So I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, she gets to me and she's speaking to me in Spanish. I have one of my friends translating and um, uh, she starts telling me things that I never told anybody, like things that happened in my childhood that I never told anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, this is, this is bugged out. And then she's asking me questions uh, or talking to me. My friend's translating. I'm responding in English. And I would respond in English. She would respond in Spanish, answering my questions or responding to me without the translation. And yeah, so I'm like, and I know this lady doesn't speak English because mm -hmm. I know her. So I'm like, man, this is, this is some pretty bugged out stuff yeah. right here. But I'm, I'm kind of hooked now because she told me this stuff that she didn't, that I, I never told anybody. And she's, um, you know, responding to me in Spanish when I'm asking her questions in English and she don't speak English. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of re like intrigued yeah. in what's going on here. So then she goes uh, on to tell me uh, not only about myself and she even told me about family members who died mm -hmm. that people in the room didn't know about, you yeah. know? So she's telling me this stuff and I'm like, wow, this is, this is some legit stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she tells me, hey, we know that you want to, uh, you know, be a famous rapper. We know you want to do this, do that. You want money. You want this. You want that. So she wait. She told you that you want to be a rapper, and you didn't volunteer any of this information. No, I mean she knew me though, so that's okay. That's something that uh, she could have known, right? Um, but she didn't know any of the other stuff, right? Because I didn't tell anybody at that point in my life. So when she was relaying this to me, I'm like, I know she doesn't know this. I know that nobody in the room knows this. So that was kind of what what got me. But the rapper thing, definitely, she could have known, mm -hmm. right? But um. So anyway, she's like, yeah, we'll, we'll give that all to you. All you have to do is this. And it was like, wear these beads, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make an altar, light these candles, do all this stuff. And me, I'm like, all right, let's see what happens. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't care at, the, at, the, at that point. I'm, right. I'm looking at this one eye like, all right, this is, this is legit. The other eye, I'm like, we'll see what happens. Right. You know? So anyway, I, I went home and I just made the, the altar. I lit all the candles. I did everything. And I still at that point, had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that these were, quote unquote, the saints. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. I was just going with the flow uh, of everything. So that was my first experience. And it was it was a little wild too, because sometimes she would like drink the beer and then like fling the the, the beer yeah. around the room. Like it was a pretty interesting experience, but it, yeah. was, it was fun to me. Mm -hmm. I thought I had a lot of fun at the time. So I'm like, All right, I think this is pretty cool. And then if if it works, if they do get me the stuff that they're saying that I can have by lighting these altars and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Cause I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't a Christian yeah. at the time. I had no spiritual discernment. I was just going with the flow mm -hmm. and I wanted the things in life. I, yeah. I wanted them. Yeah. That's always interesting. So, I mean, it's always, it always seems to be like the same story where it, like the allure, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the sex, there's, there's all, there's almost sort of like a sexiness to, mm -hmm. uh, like the occult in the sense where it's like, Ooh, it's almost like a peep show of like, it's yeah. like a peep show of the secret unknown, hidden forbidden stuff, you know? And so uh, and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I want some more of that. How can yeah. I get that? And so there's that appeal. Like, do you remember that show crossing over where yeah. it was like a whole audience of people and the guy would sort of tell people's oh, fortunes? Oh, the guy that would go around. Um, he is a say, weirdo. Who's, who's David, yeah. I'm getting the name David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But was it's his name like, Jonathan Edwards or something yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Some of that, yeah, different Jonathan Edwards for sure. Yeah, yeah, there's a different, <laughs> yeah, yeah, different yeah. one. Not that one. But, <laughs> right, right. But, you know, and some of that stuff might might be a whole charade and stuff, but mm -hmm. also there's a percentage where it's like, okay, you're actually tapping into stuff. You, yeah. There's no way you can know that in and of, in and of yourself. Yeah. So, like, what happened? So, did you just start, you, you got your own candles and mm -hmm. you kind of, like you started just kind of doing it yourself? Yeah. So I, I started lighting the candles and that, now I'm asking questions. I'm like, all right, so what, what is this? And uh -huh. this is when they start explaining to me that, uh, you know, these are the saints. Mm -hmm. So anytime that she gets possessed, right? Uh, so in, in it, they call mounting, right? Yeah. So the, the person who is being mounted by a saint is called a caballo, right? Which is like uh, the Spanish word for horse. And uh, so you're being mounted by a saint and then that saint takes you for a ride, yeah, right? Right. Um, so they said that, you know, anytime that she was mounted, it was a, it was a saint 
and this was a Catholic saint that was, you know, had your best interests, you know, why wouldn't they? They're the, they're the saints. So they have their best interests in, they have your best interests in mind. They want to guide you in the right direction. They want to help you out in life. So doing all this stuff is your way of kind of thanking them or your way of, uh, uh, it, it's really worshiping them. But at the time, I don't, I don't even really understand what worship is. I'm right. just lighting the candles for, hey, if this works, I'm going to do it. But now I'm asking questions of mm -hmm. what is it? I, what am I actually doing? And so they're explaining to me that these are saints yeah. and that, you know, you have St. John, St. Michael, so all of these different saints and each personality that she had was her being mounted by a different saint. So right. now I'm, I'm kind of, quote unquote, understanding it. But at the same time, I'm still coming at it from a, a pretty agnostic place mm -hmm. because I heard of these saints because when I was younger, my, my dad sent me to church to right. appease my grandmother. He's still an atheist today. So pray, pray for my dad, please. Uh -huh. um, but so I didn't really know much, but the names, you know, St. John, it, it like there's a St. John um, church, you know, there's uh, so these names were ringing bells. So I'm kind of like, all right, maybe it's maybe it's legit, you know, maybe this is some, some offshoot of Catholicism that I've just never heard of before that Latinos practice. And since I was, I'm the white dude being brought into this, like this was not my culture. Right. And so anyone listening to this, I, I also want you guys to understand that I'm, uh, you know, this is, this is a big part of many uh, Latin cultures. And also when we get into the African spirituality side of it, yeah. you know, it's, it's it, many people hold on to it as part of their identity. So I, we're not discussing this in a way of like attacking someone's identity. We're, right. we're truth seekers, you know, coming mm -hmm. from the premise that Jesus is who he says he is. Yeah. And so we're dissecting these right. spiritual experiences which is, which is from Which is challenging just because the occult is always syncretistic mm -hmm. within the culture that it's adapting to. So then when you're actually saying this is occultic, it might come to certain people like you're actually attacking their culture. Yeah, and that's not when, what when it's not the case. I can yeah. see where that misunderstanding could come yeah. from. In your video, right at the beginning, maybe you can elaborate, you'll know where I'm going with this, that you do sort of have to be careful about talking about this, like even on a Christian podcast, because there's almost like, yeah. there's almost, even with all you've talked about so far, there's almost this like allure. Let me look into it. Let me go yeah. look into it in a way. Talk about, like expand. Why'd you say that in the video? And they'll so, help for this as we it's just, unravel this. It's like any rabbit hole, yeah. you know? Uh, uh, there's, when I, whenever I tell my testimony, I kind of shy away from this part of it because it's so intriguing, right? And when you start really looking into it, it becomes very interesting. And it's, it's almost like the demons will start like seeking you out yeah. if you kind of start looking at this. And then you'll run across people who will tell you that you can pair this with any religion. You know, if you're a baby Christian, right? and you don't know any better, you have no spiritual discernment, and somebody is telling you, yeah, this is, you can pair this right along with Christianity, it adds to your faith, mm -hmm. you know? Going down that rabbit hole could be kind of dangerous, probably not for people who are listening to your podcast because their, their discernment is, uh, you know, on point, but many people mm -hmm. um, get caught up in it. There, I know many Christians, people who profess faith in Christ, who still practice Santeria. There's mm -hmm. Catholics who practice Santeria. And so that's why I always, you know, I, I don't really like to go down the rabbit hole because then you also have ministries that'll be built around, you know, there's people out there who build ministries around teaching you spiritual warfare of how yeah. to now combat these Santeria demons. And, and it's just, it yes. turns into a spiritual mess. So yeah. that's kind of why I, uh, and it's so intriguing. It's like watching a Netflix There's series. like a spiritual warfare and military industrial complex <laughs> of like people literally like trying to take, okay, acknowledging this stuff is bad, but then they're actually like charging an arm and a leg yeah. to learn how to fight it when it's like you actually have what you need yeah, uh, within, the, within the Holy Spirit. Greater yeah, is he that's, yeah. any of the, he that's in the world. Exactly. Like you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need to pay somebody in 1995 to learn <laughs> these like five spiritual <laughs> secrets about that. But that's huge because yeah. I, I think just as we jump back in is that, um, like I said, there's just, with all the topics that we cover, there's almost like this allure where it's like, oh, well, this is, I want you to really talk about this. And people yeah. want to be, people see this podcast, ooh, Santeria, like, what is that? And almost not, almost forgetting the fact you were a Christian podcast and realize, no, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in the person of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. versus, uh, you know, what you and Anford and so many others have done. So, um, yeah, jump back into that. So, yeah. like, so you're there at that time and you're seeking this out. You're starting to toy around with the saints yep. and all that. Where, so now, where do I go from there? Now I'm doing, now I'm, I'm into it, right? And uh, I think that I'm cool because now here I am, the the white dude. I mean, I, 
I'm like pretty much my only white friend, period. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but so, well, now I got you yeah. too, so that's great. But no, I just, you know, I grew up in Yonkers, so there's a, you know, it's a very mixed uh, community, but I had a lot of Dominican friends. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got introduced to it was from my Dominican <laughs> friends. So now I'm like, I'm learning about so much and just thinking that I'm learning about their culture. And now I'm being, I'm looking at it as I'm being let into their culture as well. Yeah. So there was an allure in that manner as well. So anyway, I'm really into it. And it's a lot of fun, uh, uh, fleshly, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of fun in that aspect. And um, I, so I'm always looking forward to the next uh, ceremony. I'm always looking forward to the next time they're going to um, have a seance or, you know, that's what I was calling it in my mind, a seance, you know, but they called it the saints are coming and mm. there was no planning. You get a phone call. Hey, they're coming tonight. You you got to show up, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I'm I'm doing it for a while, and uh, I'm starting to see more and more bugged out stuff. So one of the things that happened was, this was in a really small small ceremony. Uh, this lady smashed a um, a uh, glass over her head, and then started eating the glass, right? Like just re I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm here, she's there, right where you're at. And we're sitting crunch, on the crunch, floor. Crunch. Yeah, crunch, yeah. crunch, literally biting it like it's a like it's a tostito, right? And just swallowing it and nothing's happening to her. And I'm just like in, in my mind, uh, I'm like what is this? Right. You know, what is this? But I, I'm also justifying it saying, "Oh, this must be how powerful this stuff is that she can eat this and not be hurt by it." So, you know, I, I have that experience, then I have um uh, I, I kind of got uh, lazy mm. in doing my candles and, and stuff like that. And yeah. they called me and they said, uh, oh, before I get into that. So each, um, each person, each member of this, you kind of have a saint that's assigned to mm -hmm. you, right? Yeah. So let's say Jeremiah is now part of this. Now, all of a sudden, St. John is your saint. And this is the saint that watches over you and, mm -hmm. and everything, right? Yeah. Um, so we were finding out who what was our saint and they uh they asked the lady hey um you know who's his who's his saint and yeah. she said all of them and so that means all of the saints were essentially my guardian quote unquote angels right and at the time i'm thinking wow that's awesome i'm like the outsider here and now i have all the saints assigned to me maybe you get two Mm -hmm. most people yeah but i had all of them and in our offshoot uh i believe it was called 21 divisions there was 21 saints so mm -hmm. i had all 21 assigned to me so this this would be extra in yeah. comparison to like what people use like people yes. would have like one or two in this case and this wasn't just you just your branch this was yeah. like 21 yeah so i had 21 assigned to me and so at the time i'm thinking it's legit now looking back at it i'm like yeah that's, that's probably not a good sign um yeah. but anyway so I started becoming lazy with the, um, with the stuff. I wasn't lighting my candles. Life was going good for me as well. So things were happening. I was making money. I was, uh, you know, my music was taken off. I won underground music awards. And so I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. Things are happening. But I got lazy because mm -hmm. I was like, maybe it's just me. You know, maybe I'm just working really hard and, and yeah. doing well. So I got a phone call and they're like, John, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, nothing. Why? What's up? They're like, the saints are mad at you. And I'm like, what? What do you mean they're mad at me? And they're like, they know that you, uh, you're not taking care of your altar. You're not doing the things for them that they asked you to do. Now, where's your, where's your altar at? In my house, in your right house, in my okay. living room. Yeah, it, you walk in, it's there. Well, I had a kitchen slash living yeah. room. Yeah. Um, so it was. Now, was this true? Were you not attending to them? Yeah, I wasn't. I, I was just coasting, you know. And no one's monitoring you. There is. No, there is. There's not a. Uh, what do you, it's not like a special, there's not like a webcam. Yeah, yeah, there's no streaming, hidden Streaming camera. 24 hours. My, those friends are not like coming to my house all the time and seeing, so it, it just, I was like, wow. And how did this person get the knowledge? I have no idea. So they, you know, I got that phone call and said, uh, hey, they're mad at you. They know you're not taking care of the stuff. You're not doing what, um, I'm assuming that since she's directly connected with the other person, um, that that person somehow, one of the spirits told her or whatever, and, um, and so anyway, I'm like, all right, what do I got to do then to make them not mad at me? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to lose all the good stuff that's going on in my life. So yeah. let's just jump right into it. And so I had to do my own, uh, little seance thing, my own party. Mm -hmm. So I did my own party and at it, they were like, if you do not, um, and what's interesting is this is one person saying we, right. If you do not continue 
to, to do what we asked you to do, we're going to take everything from you. Everything we've given you will be gone. And I'm like, what? what's they threatening me? No. Wait, wait, wait. So just remind me, let me backtrack a little bit. How did you receive this communication? Oh, so I did the, the party. I did the seance yeah. thing. And at yeah. that, the woman who gets mounted, you know, possessed, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, she said this to me. So she was possessed by one of the saints, quote unquote. And we're going to get into what One that, person like saying, like saying plural we. Are yes. Going, one person is saying we, right? Kind of like venom in, uh, <laughs> in Marvel, you yeah. know? Um, Life imitates art, right? Yeah, right. Uh, so... Anyway, um, well, she's like, yeah, we'll take everything from you. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's crazy. So I had to do like a cleansing and all of this weird stuff. And uh, then I, I go on a date, right? And we'll get into the, the ceremony and the cleansing in a bit. But I, I, had, uh, I go on a date with a woman. Mm-hmm. And she's, um, she's a Latina woman. Yeah. And I'm wearing my beads. And she goes, oh, what are those beads that you're wearing? And here I am. I'm like this girl doesn't know and I'm about to school her on her own culture. Yeah. It's going to be a good night for me. Yeah. Right. Like this is how I'm thinking at yeah. that time. Like and it, cause kind of like your whole personality of what you're trying to achieve being a rapper is always about like, yeah. Hey, it's all about me and exactly. all about that. So there's probably like your, it's like a lot of ego going oh my on gosh. in this moment right now. It, all I cared about was myself, you yeah. know? So, uh, I'm, now I start breaking it down for, her. I'm telling her, yeah, these are the saints of Santeria. I'm surprised you don't know this, blah, blah, blah. And she's just listening to me, and that should have been my first, my first sign that this was kind of like kind of well. like arms crossed, like yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She's like, mm, oh, okay. And then after I'm done telling her, she's like, yeah, John, those aren't saints; those are demons. And I was like, mm. oh, this chick's bugging. And um, and she's like, yeah, read this, this, and this in the Bible. It, it it'll explain it to you. And I can't tell you where she told me. To, yeah. to read. I, I don't know. Because in my mind, I was just like, this chick is crazy. Because I still don't even really believe in, in all this stuff. Yeah. So I suffered from sleep paralysis a lot growing mm-hmm. up, but I always chalked it up to uh, like trauma from when I was a kid. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you look into it and you have the secular sources that say that, oh, yes, yeah. you're processing trauma or it's just mm-hmm. you're stuck between sleep and being awake. So I, w- I wasn't really equating my sleep paralysis with demonic uh, forces. But when she planted that seed... Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep paralysis um, while I was involved in Centuria, but I got it a lot when I went to leave it. Right. Right. So anyway, she plants that seed with me and I just continue going, uh, going on with it and, and doing, um, doing the, the stuff anyway, because I, at that time, I don't really believe in demons and angels and, and God and all this stuff. So here I am, right? It's like, I'm living two lives. I'm this like agnostic uh, borderline atheist person, sort of hostile towards Christianity. And then underneath I'm practicing Centuria as like a good luck charm. Yeah. So all of these like alarms that people try to ring for me, like they didn't ring because I just didn't really care. You know, it wasn't until I became a Christian that, um, I started not feeling the same about you know, lighting my altars and and all of this Mm. stuff, you know, Holy Spirit was convicting me, but I also didn't understand what Holy Spirit conviction like felt like because I, I I got, um, I have a long story of how I became a Christian, but essentially Mm. I was very hostile towards it. And I got invited to church a few times to Hillsong, New York city. They told me it was going to be like a rock concert. So I went and it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I didn't really learn anything there. Mm. You know, the gospel wasn't this is presented. When it was Carl Lentz teaching yeah, yeah, at the time? Yeah, Carl Lentz was there. So, yeah. you know, it was a motivational speech and I was into that stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed myself. I kept going. Then I went to, um, uh, they had college classes that Nathan Finocchio was teaching. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until then that I really understood what Christians actually believed. Yeah. Um, so I I thank God for those, uh, you know, for Nathan and those um, those courses that he was teaching over there. But then I got invited to another church in Connecticut from one of my friends and I'm just enjoying the experience of church. So I go. And at the end of that, I was down at the front, you know, taking a little pamphlet. I apparently gave my life to Christ at, at that point. And then I went home and I was like, I did not just, uh, become a Christian. You know, I had an emotional experience. I went down to the front, but it was at that point that I was like, I'm going to figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. So I went down every rabbit hole you could think of in, uh, researching the origins of 
different religions and, and yeah. stuff like in, that. In this whole process, you're still starting to do the seeking and searching. And this, the the date with this girl that you thought you're gonna, you know, get the one up on her. The, she she rocked my world. She, she rocked you, but we're <laughs> but in this whole process, were you still toying around with Santeria as you're explaining yes. this? So okay. the, that date happened before I even got invited to church. Okay. Like so that date that seed of demons was like planted in me before I even started doing this. So yeah. I I eventually looked into the origins of um Santeria and I got to make sure I say it right before my wife yells me Santeria, okay. right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but and then I that's when I discovered the African spirituality side of it. So mm. when I looked into the origins of it and I saw that this was just um you know being disguised as Catholic saints, but these were actually African gods that they were worshiping called Orishas. I was like, wait a minute, I'm believing that these are saints and they're not even really saints. They're just mm. named differently, but these are actually African spirits that so, I'm worshiping. So, yeah. So this is, a, so just to clarify then, this is a matter of like historical fact that yes. these are uh, deities that were worshiped in Africa, were yes. perceived, you know, as gods that were worship and were they because they're like ancestors as well too or so mix there, there the is two? ancestral worship and some ancestors can become deified uh -huh. um like uh, there's a few uh, okay I, I would mess up their name so i'm not even gonna try to say it but it's mostly like there's a you know a spirit of the rivers there's a spirit of the ocean there's a, a it's funny one of my friends wouldn't even pee in the ocean yeah because he thought that it would upset the spirit of the ocean yeah right? um they have a uh their creator god which is uh i believe oludamari mm -hmm. Right. And that's like, that's their yeah. God. Right. And then all of these Orishas are kind of like angels, quote unquote, or that's not what they would call them, but that's mm -hmm. what I could kind of equate it to. If yeah. you're just looking at something from like a mytho historical. Right. Um, there, there are deities that would receive worship, yes. essentially like I idolatry. Yes. But and it's like the whole time it's like you, this was actually repackaged as like people immigrated from Africa over to Cuba. They repackaged this as being as as a branch of the Catholicism. Yeah, they knew what they were doing, right? right? But, but you didn't. I had no idea. Wow. And, um, it wasn't like nobody in my, I guess you could call it group or sect or whatever. Nobody told me that this was connected to African spirituality. I only found this out after I researched the origins, mm. and that really started me questioning things. Um, but I was kind of just going along with it because I, I was like, you know, I, I don't want to lose all yeah. the stuff that I got going on. And, um, uh, how much of Mormonism have you studied? Uh, not much. Do you know the story of the book of Abraham? No. That all just, it reminds me yeah. just a little bit of it. So basically if you go in the book of Abraham, there's this document in the Pearl of Great Price where Joseph Smith found this papyrus, which was supposed to be, uh, it was a, just an Egyptian manuscript. I'll just give you the super cliff notes version, right? Yeah. Super cliff notes version. And so he believed that he had the power, the gift and power to translate this document. He said it, this was the lost book of Abraham. Mm. And so the official Mormon church still holds it to this day. But when you actually dig into the stories of the book of Abraham, it's actually not that at all. It's a funerary text that's connected to Osiris. And it's actually not what it seems. He took chunks of it and like re- wrote what the Egyptians hieroglyphics were and he told it's one of the most grossest mistranslations. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen it where people where Mormons will actually look, see the reality of what it actually is versus what they were taught. And it's like, you see their whole world, like falling apart. That just popped in my head and reminded me of just a little bit of that. Yeah. I mean, is that kind of like, Whoa, what is this? So since, since I, I didn't hold to it so spiritually and it wasn't really part of my identity. Yeah. When I learned the origins of it, I was kind of just upset oh, that, okay. um, it was more like a means to an end. Yeah. Okay. It, was a, it was a means to an end. And, but I, I was upset because I went through some stuff. So this, uh, you know, we'll get into the cleansing that mm -hmm. happened. Right. So in this cleansing, they wanted my sperm. Right. And, so, yeah, so they, they took my sperm and I still don't even know what, well, they, I gave it to them. They didn't take it, you know, <laughs> but in the, the cleanser, who are the people that are cleansing? So this the same, the, 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 same lady who, the same lady wanted your sperm. The, the, the person who gets possessed. Right. And, um, you know, the, the person who was always translating for me, yeah. who kind of did it. And so since I was, um, like just not aware of yeah. things. And I just, you know, they, they always gave me lotions and potions and like different things mm -hmm. to wear. So it's, it wasn't just like, you know, I, I was into the right. whole, Hey, this is for that. 
this is for that. This, yeah. this like perfume, perfume I was supposed to put right here is supposed to attract yeah. people to you. You know, uh, if you put this out, it's for that. So mm-hmm. in, in what they told me was the sperm was for, you know, life, for, uh, you know, greater life, right? And I got a question though. Yeah. I mean, we're both adults here and I get, yeah. I get there might be some, you know, parents with like kids listen to the back. Just be, just be wary of that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but, it, but it, it just is interesting because every faith, every religion, when you think about this no neutrality, um, which I would attest when it talks about present your body in Romans, it talks about present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Literally every form of counterfeit spirituality says the same thing to offer your body as a living sacrifice. But then sex is always an act of worship, mm-hmm. no matter what. And in this case, it's wanting to ha- offer your body as a living sacrifice, but now offering you know your sperm to be part of this ritual to get things straight yeah. with these saints. Yep, it's like this is it's a, a it's weird, so beyond. twisted, yeah. distorted version. Like every cult and every part counterform and counterfeit spirituality, they always distort. They always require sacrifice of your mm-hmm. body, but they also take some form of like weird twisted to sort of sexuality and blend that in syncretistically as well. Yeah. I, and it's, you know, when I talk about it now, I'm like, John, how are you so stupid to just say, all right, yeah, take it. You know, yeah. like how this wasn't a doctor's visit, you know, yeah. it, it, this was some weird cultish stuff. And right. I just went along with it. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. Um, and I still have absolutely no idea like what was done with that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure if, uh, you know, some spiritual warfare coach selling courses for 1999, I'm pretty sure that if they heard this, they would reach out to me with something that I have to do in order to break a yeah. generational curse or something from it. But, uh, you know, Jesus is enough for, right. for all of that stuff. So anyway, like that's his, like, that's how weird it got, you know, like, and I was like surface level. Right. in comparison to others. So if it got this weird for me, like they do animal sacrifices and, and everything yeah. like that as well. I never saw one animal get sacrificed. I knew that it went on, Yeah. but like, so I'm at like a surface level and it's this weird for me. Well, didn't, well, didn't also Joey Diaz. I mean, most people know who he yeah, is. He's, yeah. he's a comedian and he's always on the Joe Rogan experiences, like his experience always spouting out terms that don't include the word please and thank you, if you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, But like he's even talked about too, like he, you got to be really, really careful yep. with this stuff. And he's somebody who's not a Christian yeah, yeah. by any stretch of the means, but he's like, you got to be really you careful. Not to mess with. Too. And it, what's interesting is if you, if you do dig into this and you start looking into people who, people who are proponents of it, who are like all in on Centuria, they'll tell you to be careful, yeah. be careful doing this. Don't just do it to do it. So, you know, that should be a red flag period. Nobody mm-hmm. says, Hey, be careful when you put your faith in yeah. Christ, you know, uh, it's, that's, yeah. it's the complete opposite okay. of, uh, of what's told. So it, I just think about as, as weird as it was for me and as like dark as it got for me, I was still on a surface level. Mm-hmm. I could imagine. It's like, uh, it's like joining, uh, the Masons and like, you, yeah. you just stay at the first level, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Like no, the initiation is probably you, weird, but when you're doing this, was it other people like joining you? Did you kind of have like a group session and then kind of go and do it off on your own? It or? was it, so it would be group, and then it would be like me and and you know the the few head people, and then it, it, it's group. So whenever you had like a big party, the more the merrier, mm-hmm. right? So you you bring everybody in, and also you were you were encouraged to invite people as yeah. well. And sometimes here this just popped back up in my memory. Sometimes the party would be set up, and the saints wouldn't come because of somebody that was there said oh yeah they're not comfortable with coming and like looking back on it i'm like yeah that person was probably a real born again christian and they didn't want to show up when that would happen when people start like kind of looking around the room start like vetting people like no it it just it was like uh i think you know this is me trying to spiritualize it right right because it you could look at it through one of two lenses one as like yeah this lady probably just doesn't want to do it because this person's here you know as a personal thing or the these demons because that's what they are they're demons that are that are yeah. mounting these uh these santeros and santeras that it's it's demons right. that are mounting them that that lady I, I went on a date with was correct these mm-hmm. are demons right? right so i've if there is a true born again believer in the room why would the demons want to show up? Because, mm-hmm. you know, 
their their spiritual senses with the the Holy Spirit would be like, hey, you, yeah. it, th- this ain't good, you know. So I think that that would kind of uh, kind of stop them from performing the ceremony is if there was yeah. a born again Christian in the room and the only time they would come is right. when, you know, maybe me or and would this take place and this is in Puerto Rico? No, this, this was in this was in Yonkers. This was in New York. Okay. Yeah, I've only been in Puerto Rico for two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, would um no as far as location goes, if this would take place in someone's house, condo, yeah, it'd be and a, it's sort of like in a would pretty it much wherever rent you, out a Catholic church. No, 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 you do it wherever. Uh, okay. So what's interesting is this it's funny you you said that this in Puerto Rico. I'm, i should have uh clarified that earlier this is rampant um in the united states yeah it's rampant like everywhere right it's just not a lot of people know about it but most latinos know about santeria they they have an yeah. uncle they have a uh a aunt or that like reads coffee cups and you know they they know somebody who's who's a part of it so uh they have botanicas on like every corner in New York City, Botanica yeah. is a place where you go to buy like the statues and the candles and the the incense and the uh, the potions. So it's prevalent everywhere, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of practicing Catholics and and Christians who participate in this stuff because it's embedded in their culture. Yeah. Well, also, Mia, do you know much about? I have only I've only like skimmed it's like very very surface level. But with it, amongst people who are in the cartel, there's a lot of people oh, who yeah. end up like practicing the yep. occult. Is like, is there any aspect or aesthetic where like the Santeria, the practicing of Santeria is connected to different cartels? Because you look at all the craziness going on there, and a lot of it's like, man, there's got to be a demonic without getting totally yeah. a demo- like over the top. Well, sometimes when you look at some of the behavior and stuff that's going on with how people are just killing each other off, being so brutal, it's like that's got to be yeah. demonic forces behind that. Like, it's it's interesting. So what I used to be involved in gangs when I was younger and um you know there's there's one thing that I always found interesting is that you know somebody get killed or or something bad happens or if you know you're going to do something crazy or you know whenever you find yourself in a very intense situation people got spiritual real quick. Yeah. Right? And you'll find um especially in Santeria a lot of uh Latin gang members, they're wearing the beads for mm-hmm. the, the protection because that's what they are. It's protection. You know, there's kind of like a yeah. superstition that comes along with it. You know you're living this really dangerous life. And so you kind of, you're looking for some sort of protection and uh, Santeria can kind of, quote unquote, offer that, right? Right. And what's also interesting that that should have been a red flag for me when I was involved was they never told me to stop you know, hanging out with gangsters. They never told me to stop doing drugs that I was doing. They never told me to stop drinking alcohol, stop doing steroids. They never told me to stop doing any of the sleeping around with multiple women. They never told me to stop doing any of that stuff. If this mm-hmm. was truly from God, yeah, they would tell me to stop. Mm-hmm. Like it's all those things are clear, clearly yeah. sin, you know, do, doing all that stuff, clearly yeah. sin. How come these saints never mm-hmm. told me to stop sinning. Yeah. They only told me that they would give me more of what I want. So it's kind of like, you know, you give the, the whole saying, you give a certain person an inch, they go a mile. Yeah, yeah. That's really what it was like for you in this whole process. Yep. Even at the very, very beginning level. Yep. So let's jump into when I uh, when I got out of it. Yeah. Um, so I had a conversation with, um, we were at Del Frisco's, I remember it clear as day in Manhattan. Now I'm a Christian, right? So I came to Christ from just digging into the historical facts, right? Like, mm-hmm. that, that's, like case for Christ sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like just okay. really digging into it. And, yeah. um, you know, but I only intellectualized it. I only put my faith in Christ as like, yeah, I think that's the only way to heaven is mm-hmm. to put your faith in Christ. I, I fully believed it and I put my trust in Christ, but I just kept living my life as I was living it, mm-hmm. right? But eventually living my life as I was living it, you know, I started feeling convicted doing some of the things that that I was doing. Right. But uh, I remember having a conversation with uh, one of my spiritual mentors, David Peach, right? This dude was the first person that told me how to read the Bible, like really read it, you know? Um, And so I I respected him in business as well because he was like millionaire, right? And... Die, his dad was a pastor, his dad's dad was a pastor, like mm-hmm. lineage of pastors. So he knew his stuff and he was not with the prosperity gospel, not with any of the new age, you know, bleeding into Christianity. He was by the book yeah. and he just was, he was talking about the end times, right? And just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the return of Christ and right. all this. And I don't know what it was in that conversation, but I was like, I am going home and I'm destroying this altar 
the second. And by then, you know, the candles were like, you know, down and I wasn't really paying attention to it anymore, but I've just felt so convicted. I went home and I, I destroyed that altar. I threw everything out. I buried some of the stuff. Um, and, and at this time, I don't know any real theology or, or anything. So I'm like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And un- not understanding that, yeah. that that's useless, uh, you know. Well, but well, it, it is interesting. Like literally, this is something that like even people who are very like pro new ways talk about how Christianity is sort of this uh, way just to control people's minds and that sort of thing. But it's like when people actually come to Christ, like the one, the, the, the immediate thing that they do like of their own free will, like instinctively is like destroy mm-hmm. those objects. It's not like some giant conspiracy to like destroy yeah. all their objects. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like that you do that voluntarily. I just, I knew it. I was like, I'm going home and I'm, I was like, I'm convinced these are demons that are, you know, I'm allowing these demons to have access to my life for, for what? My own personal gain, mm-hmm. you know, for, for worldly things. And uh, so I went down, I broke, broke down the altar, got rid of it. And it was true what they said, that they would take everything from me. Yeah. My, my business started going backwards. The relationship that I was in, I mean, I was living in sin in that relationship, but you know, that, uh, that went really bad, really fast. Uh, like my life kind of just started spir- spiraling out of control, but I made a decision. I was like, I'm never submitting to, uh, yeah. to, to anyone else's authority. Well, it would be almost like your life was like a carrot. It, your life was like the carrot that they're dangling yeah. in front of you. And now that you had, now that you had rejected it, now they're trying to yank it away and you're hanging on to the carrot. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? I, I don't care how bad it gets. I, I really, I do believe Jesus is who he says he is. And right. I do believe these are demons and I'm not going to, you know, drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons at the same time. Like, I'm just not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, it, it got pretty intense. And then my, uh, sleep paralysis, increased like crazy yeah oh well, my gosh yeah well let's let's do this let's i want to jump into that more because yeah. i mean you're only given the very cliff notes there's a lot more to unpack yeah, I'm sorry, this. I'm sorry. I'm, I no speed we're good talk. <laughs> no we're good so we've, we've gone for about an hour so uh what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and take a pause we're going to jump into part two um and also we got to order food because otherwise we're yeah, going to be yeah. all lightheaded and stuff like that but um yeah let's just jump into it more real quick before we wrap up where can people find you at you're on youtube do you yep. have a What's your, what's home base for you? Just YouTube, I would say is the, that's what I'm most focused on. So just John Clash, no H in the John. uh, Yeah. J-O-N. Yep. J-O-N Clash. That's how I found you. Yeah. Yeah. Super easy. If you type in J-O-H-N, I think like some other stuff shows up. Yeah. uh, So Clash of Clans, like the video games, like (laughs) all of that stuff starts popping up. That's hilarious. Or if you put join Clash, Clash, like all these different video games. So you have to put J-O-N Clash and then you'll be able to have all my other links and stuff like that. Also, uh, on we just started a, a podcast on the Why Jesus Network, okay. right? So you just at Why Jesus Network, uh, at the Why Jesus Network awesome. on YouTube. Yep. Cool. And shout out to all of those people, man. I got a nice group over there of believers, Christian YouTube creators that are just killing it. I know. So, it's cool that we know like a lot of the same people too, yeah. like Melissa Doherty or good friends with her. And shout I, out I wouldn't to say Melissa. I'm good friends with her. I, I just connected with her yeah. and she's just been an absolute blessing. Her ministry has oh, been a, a blessing and she's, she's awesome. just awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, very cool. Uh, well, appreciate you hanging out with us today, and uh, I'm sure you're enjoy you're enjoy some American food versus the uh, Puerto Rican food. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. Get that. My, my wife makes fun of me for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys enjoyed uh, the first part of this episode, definitely let us know what you thought. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes, whether it's uh, one star, or five star. We always appreciate your positive feedback. And as always, a program like this cannot continue without your support. So please uh, help us keep stay uh, on the air. I guess you want to call it. Help us keep afloat go to the cultishow.com there's a donation tab you can donate one time become a monthly partner with us all that being said we'll talk to you next time on cultish where we enter into the crazy and wild world of santeria talk to you all soon